Hey guys, welcome to this new masterclass of Mystica Boutique and Mystica Ultima. In this particular case, we're going to talk about uh, color management in Mystica. Um, first of all, this masterclass is not uh, some kind of uh, explanation of how you have to do your job. In this particular case, we're going to talk about some recommendations, some tips, some explanation of, of how Mystica works. Uh, but it's not uh, mandatory to use these tips for your workflows. Uh, as you will probably know, in Mystica, you have always several ways to do the same job. Uh, so in this particular case, we're going to offer uh, like some solutions, some examples of, of how we can manage uh, the color of, of, of our projects. But if you already have a project, uh, a color management workflow that it works in your in your projects or or in your in your deliverables. Uh, then it's fine. You can still use that 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 workflow because at the end, what it's what it really matters is that uh, everything is right for your client or for the final uh, delivery. So in this particular case, we're going to just offer uh, some examples and some uh, solutions of how can we use Mystica for managing the color in any kind of project. Uh, this list that you can see here in this um, in this snapshot is basically uh, the list of topics that we are going to cover in this masterclass. Uh, as you can see, it's a fairly large uh, list, but many of those points are really simple, are really easy to explain and really fast. So we won't uh, stay too much time in some of those of those points. In fact, we're going to start with the basics, uh, talking about the color management with the raw formats, which I know that probably most of you or many of you, you already know it, how to work with these kind of files. But just for starting from the scratch, I will start from that point and then I will go to a more advanced uh, workflows covering uh, a standard uh, industry workflows like uh, Dolby Vision, HDR, SDR, and using some uh, specific uh, tools in Mystica for managing those workflows like display filters, etc. All right, so I'm going to go back to my timeline. So we're going to start from here. I'm going to leave this uh, list over there, just in case I need to take a look um, and see that we cover everything. But okay, I think we can start with, this, with these shots that I have in, in here. Uh, as you can see, we have some shots in my timeline. This is a combination of red files uh, from, uh, from one of our customers, uh, Jeff Grossfeld. So thank you very much for for letting us uh, to use these, uh, these files for this masterclass. Uh, then we have another shots from uh, Avery, which, is, uh, which are basically the sample uh, shots that they have in their website to test uh, their cameras and, and to test their, their images. So I choose like a combination of, um, of these two raw formats because one of the first problematic when we start a project in Mystica is what happened when we work uh, with raw media and specifically what happened when we work with mixed raw media or with, with mixed media in general, all right? Because uh, the best way, the first uh, step when we work with raw media is loading, of course, the debayer for the for that media. So if we go to the effects, we have the debayer parameters in here for the red camera, every camera, Sony, Canon, Phantom, DNG, etc. Um, now the problem is, if we apply a wrong divider to the wrong media, for example, applying red params to the array, we will get uh, something wrong, an image that is wrong. So we need to apply the right divider for uh, the media. Just for starting from the basics, I'm just going to select this shot and I'm just to put it up so we can make a difference compared with the others. And I'm going to just to play the red params over there. Uh, when we load uh, the red params or the params for for a divider for, for our raw media, basically Mystica loads by default or the source uh, media from the camera, so the source metadata from the camera. That's the reason why when we open the divider, we see here uh, source uh, for Kelvin use, for tint, source, 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 everything is the source, so it's basically the metadata uh, from the camera. Specifically, if we go to the settings or the, from the new IPP2, uh, we see all source for color space, a gamma curve, ISO, etc. Uh, which is most uh, more interesting in this in this specific uh, masterclass is basically the gamma curve and the color space because again we are going to talk about uh, color management. Now, how can we see the right values uh, of the camera in Mystica? The right way to do it is just once we have load 
our uh, divider. We go to Edit, Macros, and in here we have an option that is called Load Row Parent. So if we click it, a start appears on top of the effects, which means that this effect has been modified. So we can just go in here, open it, and now we see the value in there. So we have the Kelvin value, the team value, etc. If we go to the settings, again, because this is the most interesting part for this uh, masterclass, we have the gamma curve, which was a uh, red gamma 4, and the cross space, which was a uh, dragon color 2. If we go to IPP2, we have all the parameters from the IPP2 in there. So in that way, we can just load and see the metadata uh, parameters, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the default metadata from the camera for the camera uh, in, in these uh, divider effects. Um, the image is not changing at all because again, even when we, if you, even if you don't load the divider for this for this shot, uh, Mystic automatically reads the metadata and loads the metadata from the camera there. So this is just a way to visualize that metadata in the right effect, okay? So, okay, so with this in mind, if we only have a project with uh, red files, for example, we just need to take all of them, FX, red, uh, again, I'm just, I'm leaving here the RV clips, uh, so I'm going to focus only on the red ones, and then with all selected, I can just go to edit, macros, load row params, and there you go, now all the FX, all the divider params are loading the metadata from the camera. Now again, the problem of this workflow is what happens when we have mixed media because we cannot apply a red param or a array param to all my shots because I have mixed uh, clips. Well, one trick is to using our browser to managing this kind of uh, problem. The first thing when we all load, uh, when we import the media in Mystica, basically we create links to that media. And it's pretty common to have organized uh, that media in folders. So we have array folder and red folder. If we go to the array one, I can just select all my clips, go to edit, and click in find and select. And that way, the array clips will be selected in my timeline. So I can just put over there the array params. And I can do this, do the same thing with the red ones by just selecting all of them, edit, find and select, and there you go. Now my red files. Has been selected so i can just apply the red parts over here now with all of them uh, applied i can just take all of my dividers to go to macro load row params and there you go now even the uh r reparams and the red are loading the metadata information from the camera uh, as you can see um mystica is clever enough to understand that here it has to load the metadata for Avery and in the red one has to load the metadata from red files. So in that particular case, you don't need to load a different or, or to apply this, this macro uh, twice, depending on the amount of mixed media that you have in your timeline. So as you can see, well, the managing of, of, um, of raw formats is fairly simple. Uh, this trick is pretty useful again when you have a mixed media in your timeline or in your conform uh, file because in that way you can find in a pretty easy way your clips in, in your timeline. So it's, it's always recommended to, to have this, uh, this feature in mind. Okay. Now when uh, once we have load our uh, divider, maybe we want to change something in the divider, change the color space and change the gamma cure. But for now, I'm going to manage the color uh, with our color management tool. So I'm going to ignore in this particular case and in this particular example, the red files, and I'm going to focus only in the array files. So I'm just going to move them here so we don't make the mistake of going to those shots. So for example, in here, if we open uh, the divider for our in there, we go to the color space and we see that we have white gamma plus log C. So basically we have the color space and the gamma curve, uh, both of them combined. Uh, this is quite different from what we have in red, because in red we have the gamma curve and the color space but, uh, separated, but in every both works together, which is the normal way to work. Now, if we want to manage uh, or make any kind of core transformation over this shot, uh, of course, because we're working with raw media, we can just transform it from here and select another profile. But in this particular case, I'm going to use the unicolor effect instead. So I'm going to load it and I'm going to open the unicolor. 
The Unicore is our main color management tool. It's really, really simple. Basically, it has an input curve and an input gamut, and then an output gamut and an output curve. And the possibility of transforming the gamut uh, or not. Uh, you, you can select if you want to transform the color space or not, or just make a gamma curve transformation. So, for example, in this particular case, we have a white gamut and log C. Well, we can transform this to rec 709 by selecting my input curve is log C. My input gamut is white gamut. I want to transform the gamut, so I'm going to click in yes. And from here, I can just select rec 709. And from the output curve, I can select gamma 2.4. There we go. Uh, again, just as a reminder, basically, we had as an output color space the white gamut and log C. And then from the unicolor, we take it as an input and we deliver the output that we want. So basically, this is a, a color transformation tool. Uh, we select the gamma curve, the color space, and we select the output gamma, the, the output gamma, uh, color space and the output uh, gamma curve. Um, with this tool, we can just make very complex uh, workflows or very simple ones like this one, because at the end, we're just transforming from Loxy to REC uh, 709. No? All right, so the thing is, um, what if I want to apply this, how can I apply, for example, this, uh, these um, settings to the rest of my timeline or to the shots that I have in my timeline, etc. Because as you can see, uh, the unicolor here is working in one shot. Now, here comes a really important uh, thing, a really important element in Mystica. Mystica's timeline is agnostic. It doesn't have a proper color space or a proper gamma curve applied. And for that reason, I can combine any amount of color spaces and any, any amount of gamma curves in the timeline. For example, this shot right now is in Rec. 709 thanks to the Unicolor tool. But this shot is still in Log C, in White Gamut Log C. And this shot, the red one, is in Red Gamma 4 and Dragon Color 2. So at the end, basically, what I have is an infinite space where I can just put any amount of clips with any amount of color spaces and gamma curves uh, without uh, changing uh, the behavior of the timeline. So basically, we're managing uh, the color of my projects shot by shot. But of course, this is not mm, the only way to work. What happens if we have, for example, this particular case with three shots, uh, but this can be uh, extrapolated to any amount of shots. Let's say that we want to, um, to extend or to propagate these uh, settings that transform from Log C to Rec. 709 to the rest of my uh, timeline or of my project. Well, in that particular case, I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm going to select all my clips, go to effects, and insert a unicolor effect. There we go. Now, we don't need to work uh, in all my shots or going shot by shot. We can just use one as a reference and then propagate this unicolor to the rest of my timeline. So basically, if I do the same thing, which basically was to select log C and white gamut, I can transform this to, again, Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4, right? So now from here, I can just take all those parameters, go to Propagate, and click on, in All Objects. Um, we have several options here. We can work by Gangs, uh, we can work by Current Layer, which will affect only the unicolors that are in this layer, in this, in this track in my timeline, or we can just select, use the selected ones. In this particular case, I'm just going to propagate to all my unicorns because at the end, I, we only have unicorns in the array file, so that's fine. It's uh, a quicker way because at the end, it will uh, affect all the unicorn effects in my timeline. So I'm going to click in Perform Propagate. Here I get a warning message telling me that uh, it, uh, this feature is going to overwrite all the original parameters of the unicolors. So I'm going to click OK because it's what I want. And then all my unicolors have the same settings, as you can see. So this is a very quick way to propagate as color settings to the rest of my shots or to, the, to my timeline. Another way to do it is using another macro. So basically, if we take the unicolor in here and extend it, this will take all my shots. Now, for navigation reasons, I always recommend to split 
this kind of uh, general effects that takes a full timeline into uh, shots. It's not mandatory and there are many many situations where having these uh, effects like uh, having the having the effects in this way is pretty useful but in this particular case because well first because we only have three shots and because uh, we are just applying one effect on top of it I can just take the full stacks go to macro and click in a split conform in that way Mystica will cut all the shots, all the all the effects in shots. So it's another quick way to subdivide um, a, an effect. Of course, this option is still available. So for example, if we want to just put something as a general adjustment for all my shots, uh, normally this will be on top of my stack because normally it will be affect uh, the output or something like that. Basically, we can just increase the scope and just put it in there. I always uh, recommend to, to increase the scope and leave some space in here just in case we want to put more effects in my timeline without affecting the full structure of my of my stack. So again, three ways to do the same thing because at the end this effect is affecting the in the same way than, than, than the uh, splitted effect uh, my timeline. So at the end the behavior is the same, the result is the same, the only different uh the only difference is how we manage that uh that unicolor okay so um with this in mind we can just uh try to understand uh where to place the color rate in this kind of stacks because as you can see when i just put this up and put some effects in here you have seen that i put the color rate over there and then we have the unicolor here so um where we should put the unicolor, or sorry, where we should put the color grade in my timeline? Uh, well, to be fair, this depends, of course, of the workflow, and it depends, of course, of the project. For example, in this particular case, just to stay uh, in the basics, I'm going to just use one shot as an example. I want to make my SDR, an SDR version, a Rex and I version of this shot, and in here, I want to make the color grade. Where should I play? Where should I apply the um, the color grade? Well, in this particular case, I will apply it in here below the transformation to Rex seven or nine. Basically, because we want, or I prefer, and I think uh, you will be agree with me that it's much uh, better to grade in Loxy and White Gamma than doing it in Rex seven or nine and Gamma two point four, where you are basically in. Uh, limiting a little bit of your signal. Um, Mystica, uh, the, the color range in Mystica is never lost, so you always keep it, but even though it's much better to work uh, with this unicolor on top of your stack, because at the end, this is like your output, uh, this is like your output uh, effect for, for, for your grading. So basically, we have our array params in log C and with gamut, then we, we grade over that uh, color settings, and we finally output to Rex 709 and Gamma 2.4. Uh, the way to work in that way is by using the the evil tree. As you can see, we have two selectors. One is in blue, the other one is in green. Uh, this is a pretty basic uh, stuff in Mystica, but just uh, to refresh a little bit uh, how this works. Basically, the blue one controls your output, and your green one green one controls the parameters uh, the effect so yeah it controls the effects that you want to that you want to change so in this case we're keeping the output in the last in the last uh, unicolor and we are just uh, transforming and selecting the effect that we want to change so for example here the color grade and then we can just make our contrast increase saturation etc etc all right so basically this is the way to work when we have uh, this pretty basic workflow. Uh, we want to create in C and we want to output to rec uh, 709. Now this can change when we work uh, in more complex examples. So let's take a look to this. I'm going to move I'm going to remove this. And in this particular case I'm I'm going to show you a more complex example uh, by 
creating a workflow for DCPs, for creating a movie or any kind of content that is going to be projected in a, in a theater. So basically, um, in this workflow, we have here the web gamut uh, plus Loxy. Um, normally, when we grade something for the DCP, we work in P3 and Gamma 2.6. So we can just select it directly from here. Uh, just to offer you another option, just because let's say that you want to keep the camera settings uh, by default in your in your divider, I'm going to keep the white gamut plus Loxy, and instead of make the transformation directly here, which is probably the fastest way to do it, I'm going to use a unicolor. So I go to the unicolor effect, and in here I'm going to make a transformation from Loxy and DCP and the MP3. Sorry. And then I'm going to transform, oh sorry, no, this is uh, white gamut. And then I'm going to transform to P3 and uh, gamma 2.6. There you go. So basically we are transforming from uh, white gamut plus log C to P3 and gamma 2.6, which are uh, the basic settings for uh, grading for theater and for creating DCPs. So basically, I'm going to add a color grade over here and then I can just grade in there. As you can see in this particular case, I'm grading over the unicolor because P3 uh, is limiting uh, my signal much less than Rec. 709. But you can as well work in this way. Both of them are perfectly correct. So because at the end, uh, what is important is to know that at the, at the end, your output is P3 and Gamma 2.6. The color grade doesn't transform uh, your output. So if the latest color transformation is in here and then you apply uh, multiple color grades, uh, that doesn't matter because your output is still the latest unicolor, the latest uh, effect that transform the color space and your Gamma curve. So for that reason, is not really important from the technical point of view, not for the grading part, but for the technical point of view, if the unicolor is in here, or is in top. I guess that many of you will prefer to work in this way with a color grade in the middle and your P3 uh, Gamma 2.6 on top, but both are correct. Now, one, what happened uh, when we create a DCP? Well, this is not the last uh, color transformation that we have to do. At the end, uh, we need to make another color transformation, which is to transform from P3 and Gamma 2.6 to XYZ, which is the uh, standard color space for uh, for DCP. So in that situation, we can just apply another unicolor, and this unicolor I can transform from gamma two point six and P three to X Y Z, and this is the end gamma two point six, which is basically the right gamma curve for DCPs. You can see in here that uh, the system is telling you that this is the proper gamma curve for X Y Z. So I select it, and there you go. This is the image that we will render to J2K to then uh, pack those J2K in an MXF in the in the DCP module. So this is an example of how we how we work with more than one unicolor in our uh, timeline. Basically, we have one unicolor from our uh, grading output in this particular case, and then one uh, standard transformation for uh, rendering to J2K for the DCP. Um, again, and this is important, at the end your output is as well controlled by your monitor. So if, even if you, are work, if you are working in this case, so basically we have this, uh, DC, uh, this P3 gamma, uh, color space and the gamma 2.6 selected, if in our uh, external monitor, if in our reference monitor we have another settings, at the end we are making the grading for those settings. So the last element in the chain is basically your monitor. So this is really important uh, because at the end it's much better to match uh, the output from Mystica to the settings in the monitor than trying to have something different between them. Because at the end you will get um, not, uh, visually probably is not wrong, but uh, technically it can be uh, wrong the fact that you have in here in your timeline you're making your grading for P3 and Gamma 2.6, but at the end you are by correcting uh, with your eye using basically the color grade node uh, the latest transformation, which is uh, 
uh, transformation to Rec 709 uh, because you have, for example, your monitor in Rec 709. So keep in mind that Mystica uh, in this particular case controls most of the transformations, but the last one is already is uh, always done for your reference monitor. If your reference monitor is the have the same settings uh, than Mystica, then you are in a very safe environment in the fact in the in the way that everything is controlled uh, by Mystica. But if your monitor have different settings, then you have to take uh, care of that because. Uh, maybe the result is not uh, what do you what do you expect? So be careful with that. Um, but again, uh, as you can see, this is uh, this is an example of how we merge, of how we compare, or how we mix uh, two unit colors. In this particular case, we have uh, three uh, elements that control the color space. The first one is the divider, which is with the white gamut plus what C, and the other one is the, the unicolor for transforming from lot C and white gamma 2p3 and gamma 2.6 and the last one is transforming to XYZ and DCDM and gamma 2.6. Basically this is a chain of, uh, of changes. Basically this output will be the input of this unicolor and the output of this unicolor will be the input of the last unicolor. It works always in that way, in that direction. I know that there are some advanced operators that breaks this kind of rules uh, because they found it um, more more useful for for their grading because they prefer to grade in other color spaces and and, and cheat a little bit uh, with Mystica um, using weird settings combining uh, color spaces and gamma curves that normally don't work together etc. Um, I'm not going to enter in this kind of workflows because uh, well if, again as I said at the beginning if they work they work, you don't need to worry about it. But in this particular case, I will focus on more standard uh, workflows to at least uh, give you a full overview of how Mystica manage uh, color in, in the timeline. All right, so uh, with this, uh, with this uh, philosophy in mind, we can work with ACES because at the end, when we uh, work with ACES, we are doing something similar to what we are doing in here. Basically, we have an input color space, we have our grading over that color space, and we have an output. Uh, the, the structure is normally the same independently of the project. So let's go and, spoke and, and let's cover the ACES workflow. I'm going to use this shot just to change and to offer another, another kind of uh, file. In this particular case, the red one. So in here, we're going to change the divider parameters. Uh, I'm going to go inside and just go to my settings. And in there, in the in the in the settings folder, I have the bit depth where I can find the 16 bits ACES. This uh, setting change depending of the of the raw media. So if we go to the array ones, we will see that it's in color space and we have ACES there. If we click it, it will transform to ACES and linear because basically uh, is the um, the IDT for the camera is uh, the ACES color space and the AP0 in this case and the linear gamma curve which is the standard when we work uh, with ACES. So I'm going to do the same thing here, this shot, by selecting ACES 16 bits. There you go. As you can see, it's changing automatically to linear because again, this is the standard for ACES. Okay, so how can we work with this kind of files? Right, so now we have to select, once we have this, this uh, setting uh, applied in the divider, we have to select in which, color, in which color space and in which gamma curve we want to work. This is more, uh, it's up to the colorist, uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, in this particular case, you can use the gamma curve and the color space that you want, because at the end, we will apply a, an output transformation using, using the ACES ODT. In this workflow, in this example that I'm showing here, I'm going to focus on the standard uh, protocol or in the standard or the most standard uh, way to work by using a unicolor. And in this unicolor, I'm going to select the input curve linear, the input gamut AP0, which is the ACE linear. I'm going to transform the uh, gamut. I'm going to go to output gamut and select AP1, which is the color space for ACES CCT, which is the gamma curve that I'm going to use in this particular case for my grading. So AP1, this is CCT. 
and here ACS CCT, which again is the color uh, correction, color transformation uh, gamma curve that I'm going to use for my grading. So I select it. There you go. And now over here, I'm going to apply my color grade because again, this is the transformation that I've created for my grading. Again, these settings can be overruled and use other settings like, for example, Alexa with Gamut and, and Log C or Sony, if you prefer, with S3, etc. You can use other settings here because at the end you will apply a final transformation with ACES ODT. But it's very, it's, if you're working in an ACES workflow, it makes sense to use the whole time ACES parameters. So we go to my color grid and over my color grid, I'm going to apply the ACES ODT, which is basically the, this, the, this, the output display transformation. So I'm going to select it. And in here, this is like a unicolor, but focused on uh, the ACES parameter or the ACES settings. So in here, I'm going to select the ACES CCT, which again, was my output from the unicolor. The gamut is going to be AP1, which again, was my output from the my unicolor. And then finally here, we have a, a, a file, a list of settings uh, proposed by, by ACES which basically contains like several uh, color spaces and gamma cure, for example, here is P3, uh, in D60, D65, we have REC709, REC2020, uh, we, and of course we have the HDR uh, gamma cures that we will see uh, later. Uh, the great thing of the ACS ODT is that, for example, here for HDR, it basically have information about the needs of our monitor, so we can make the transformation in a, more, in a much more accurate way. But in this particular case, just to show how this works, I'm going to select REC 709 because at the end, I guess that most of you will see this, this masterclass in a normal uh, monitor. So I'm going to select REC 709 to see the transformation in, a more, in, in, the, best, in the best possible way. All right, so this is the final transformation. And as you can see, as we did uh, with the previous unicolors, we have the ACES ODT on top. So basically we keep uh, the ACES ODT here on top and then we work in the color grid, all right? Um, then later we can just export everything uh, together. So this is uh, an example of how ACES workflow uh, works. Uh, basically, it's pretty similar to what we have in here with the DCP or what we did with the REC 709. In this particular case, the main difference is the fact that we are using a unicolor to transform to the ACES uh, color space and gamma cure for the grading. And we're using a specific effect. Instead of a unicolor, we're using a specific effect for the final transformation for our output. This basically is the setting that has to match the settings that we have in the monitor. The same thing that we have in our DCP example with uh, to remove the XYZ setting. In here, we have the P3 and gamma 2.6, which uh, those are the settings that we need to have as well in our monitor to get uh, the most accurate uh, result. In here, we should have the selected preset here in ACES ODD. All right. Now, when we talk about ACES, we normally talk about HDR, SDR, etc., etc. Um, HDR normally is not more complicated than working with SDR projects. But when we work in an HDR project, normally we need to deliver two versions. One is an HDR, the second one is the SDR version. It's pretty uncommon to only have one specific version, like uh, only HDR uh, or, well, or only SDR in this case. So we're going to show how can we manage uh, for the same project, for the same uh, clips, for the same amount of clips, how can we manage the HDR version and the SDR version at the same time. Right, I'm going to start with the most obvious uh, way to do it. Uh, I'm going to remove the array files. I don't need them for this explanation. So I'm going to focus only in the uh, red files. I'm going to deliver all those transformations that I did in here. Uh, you will see that I'm going to replicate them again, but well, it, it works as a reminder of how we did it. So, so let's start from, from the scratch. And here I'm going just to go to 16 bits just to recover a previous situation. Okay, good. All right, so we have this uh, 
this timeline and we need to uh, to make our color management workflow. Um, well, the first thing when we have to do an HDR project or an SDR project is to think about which is going to be um, the main version for that project. Um, there are many colors that prefer to work in the SDR version and then go to the HDR version because they know that it's much more probable that um, more people will see the project in a normal SDR monitor. And so there are other colors that prefer to uh, spend their time or most of their time in the best version, which are, at the end, for technical reasons, will be probably the HDR version, and then make some adjustment to create the SDR uh, version. In this particular case, I'm going to use, to use this last example. So I'm going to start with the HDR version and then move to the SDR. But uh, again, as I said at the beginning, this is not um, this is not a, this masterclass is not to tell you how you should work. It's just to offer you, to offering you uh, different examples and different workflows of how we can manage the color in in Mystica. Uh, again. If you prefer to work in HDR at the beginning and then move to the HDR version, that's totally fine. It's just uh, it's just another another option. All right. So in this particular case, I'm going to manage my HDR workflow using Aces again, uh, because uh, well, at the end, it's a standard. is uh, is being uh, used by most of the well, well, the biggest companies right now in, in the market. Netflix, for example, is is uh, defending the use of ACES in the workflows, in, in their workflow. So at the end, uh, because it's becoming a standard, I think it's important to, to, to work with it and see uh, different examples of how to work with, with ACES. So in this particular case, the first thing I'm going to do is to, again, go to my BitDev in my divider uh, file, the divider effect, sorry, and select 16 ACES. And with this bit that uh, selected, I'm going just to propagate this setting, only this setting, be careful, do not select the full settings or the full folder because you will propagate all of it and we only need to propagate the bit depth. So select the bit depth with all objects active and just perform propagate. Well, I say all objects because I know that in my timeline right now we only have uh, red files, but if you have mixed uh, media, do what I did at the, at the beginning. Using your media, you can just select your files by format and then apply the red params and make the propagate by selected or the current layer if you have it uh, you have your files in different layers etc in this particular case i'm just going to use all objects so perform propagate okay and now i'm going to enable my storyboard there we go now all my files are in linear and aces color space well, except this file, of course, because this is not red. This is a normal tip. So basically, all my red files now have uh, this parameter. Now we go to all of them, and I'm going to load a unicolor effect. There we go. Uh, with this unicolor, I'm going to transform from linear and AP0, like we did before. I'm going to transform the color space and select AP1, which is the color space for ACES CCT, remember? And finally, ACES CCT to make our grading. Okay, that's good. And now I'm going to propagate uh, this setting to the rest of my unicolors. So basically, I'm going to take all this. In this particular case, I'm going to take all the settings because I want to propagate everything. Perform propagate. Okay. And now all my clips have this setting apply, as you can see here. Great. Now is the moment to load my SDR. My, sorry, my SDR, my color grid uh, effect. The SDR version, we will do it later. All right, so my, I have my color grid effect on top of my unicolor. And without going to the color grid, I'm going to select my ACES ODT in here. Now, because I want to uh, rename it, uh, just to keep things uh, more simple, I'm going to just, instead of loading an ACSLT over all my shots, I'm going to load sobre, over one of them, so ACSLT. I'm going to go to my edit attributes ACSLT HDR, just to give more information in my time and, and keep things uh, in a more uh, clear way. 
just extend this clip, check everything, edit, macro, split, confirm. As you can see, we are using basically the same tools over and over again uh, in this particular case to, to an HDR workflow, but this can be used as well for any kind of workflow. In this ACES ODT file, I'm going to select ACES CCT as my input curve, which was the output from a unicolor. The AP1 color space, which again was the output of my unicolor. And then in here, I'm going to select the gamma curve that I want to use for my HDR workflow. Let's say that we want to use the REC 2020 4000 nits PQ because we're working, for example, with the Dolby Pulsar uh, monitor. So we select it. There you go. And I'm going to propagate these settings over the rest of my ACES ODD files. So all objects perform. OK. And now all my clips have the same settings. Uh, so basically, I just prepared my timeline to start my grading. As you can see, I've never started grading until I have my color management done. Uh, this is really important because at the end, uh, if your color workflow is pretty clear and it's working fine, uh, then you basically, basically start uh, with the technical part and then you go to the artistic or the more start artistic part without uh, any kind of issues or technical issues in the, in the future. So that's the reason why I normally recommend to build your, to build your timeline first and then uh, start with the creative uh, stuff. Uh, in this particular case, our timeline is built uh, from the color management perspective. Uh, we probably need a framing just to scale uh, the files to the, pro to the project resolution, which is HD. But other than that, the color management is already done. So now we can start in here. Uh, to make our grading, okay. Uh, for obvious reasons, because we are working in Rec 2020 and 4000 nits, uh, any adjustment that I can do in here won't make any sense from a visual point of view. So I'm not going to spend any time here in the color grade. But basically, the color grade is taking the signal that comes from the unicolor, and at the end, we have the transformation with the ACES ODT uh, effect. Great, now this is my HDR version. So how we manage uh, the SDR version? Well, again, uh, the, at the beginning I said I'm going to start with the most obvious way to do it, which is basically by duplicating my project or by duplicating my timeline. Uh, I can just take all my files, duplicate them, and just put them in here. Um, now, instead of using this ACES ODT HDR, which is configured in uh, REC 2020 and 4000 nits, I'm going to use another ACES ODT, which is one for REC 709, for example. But before doing this, remember that we use this uh, version of my project as my master project because I wanted to spend more time in the HDR version because at the end I can just get more details and I can uh, make more stuff than, than, the, than the things that I can do in a normal HDR project. So this color grade over here at the end is working like my master grading. Even if this master grading has been created to REC 2020 and 4000 nits, at the end, is useful for the SDR version. So instead of removing this grading, what we are going to apply is another layer of color grades. Uh, just to keep it simple again, what I'm going to do is going to load a color grade in here, and I'm going to just to rename, to rename it uh, and call it grade SDR. All right. So this is going to be our adjustment for as for my SDR version. So what I can do is just take this again, extend it, take it, macro, and split conform. So basically we have my master grading, which was created for my HDR version, my adjustment for the SDR version, and then the last one is the AC solidity, which I'm going to call it AC solidity SDR. So in that way, oops, sorry. In that way, I have just prepared my timeline for the SDR version as well. There you go. So now basically we have 
the two versions. We have the HDR version and the SDR version. Now, one thing that you will probably uh, 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 that you will probably ask is, well, okay, that's good. Uh, timeline is flexible. That's obvious. But how we can just move from here to here if we make any adjustment in my master version and I want to bring that adjustment in my uh, SDR version? Well, we can use the matching based functionality, but we need to be careful with one thing. If we take all this project here and select copy, then if we go to here and select match and paste and try to match by time code, by real name, etc., by everything, this will replace all the effects in my stack. So if I click and paste, you see that basically we have just removed all the uh, settings and all the adjustments that we did uh, for my SDR version. We are basically duplicating this project over here which is not what we want because we want to keep my SDR version there. So how can we move this? How can we uh, change that? All right, so there is a pretty cool way to do it, which is basically by first locking this. Because at the end, this ACES ODT effect, we want to bring, we don't want to bring it, uh, to bring it to my SDR version. And we don't want to replace my SDR settings, my great SDR and my ACS ODT SDR. So I'm going to lock them as well. So in that way, I'm sure that those are not being replaced when I copy from here to there. So basically, I'm just leaving this area here for, uh, for uh, modifying. Basically, the area that controls my master grading and all the previous color transformations that we did to adapt my project to ACES AP1 and ACES CCT. This part is the one that I want to replace if I make any change in here. I want to propagate the change to the HDR version. So from here, let's for example do a quick adjustment. So something pretty obvious so we can see it uh, directly in the other version. I can just take this, copy, take my second version, match and paste, and paste. And as you can see, the shot that we change in there has now the same adjustment. But the good thing is we haven't replaced the SDR uh, area or the SDR settings for my project. So basically we are keeping both of them and just copy from one to the other. So it's a very quick uh, workflow if you want to keep uh, by separate the two versions. All right. All right. So now, but now let's go to a more advanced option. So I'm going to duplicate this project over here and put it in there. All right, so this is cool because, well, it's an example of how we can just move settings from one project to, to another. So that's, that's really cool. But what happens if we want to compare two versions, the HDR and the SDR version at the same time, which is something that is a very powerful feature of Mystica. Um, in this particular case, we need to build our timeline like we have done in here. But basically what we are going to do is to combine this version with this version over here. Uh, to make it faster, I'm going just to do it again, all the output parts. So we this works as a reminder again and, and as an example of how this works. I'm going to make this smaller timeline to, to have more effects in here in a more cleaner way. So basically, we have this unicolor, remember that uh, we have it in AP1 and ACES CCT. And over this unicolor, I'm going to apply my color grading node, all right? But instead of just load the color grid, I'm going to make it easier by rename it and calling uh, master grading, all right? And I'm going to now insert another color grid, which is going to be called SDR grading. And now I need two ACES ODT because one is for my HDR version. I'm going to call it uh, ODT HDR. And the other one is going to call it HDR, uh, SDR. 
there you go. So now basically what we are doing is exactly what we did in here by combining my HDR version with the SDR version in just one stack. So basically we have our master grading, which is the one that we are going to use for my HDR version. My SDR grading, which is the adjustment that I'm going to apply over my master grading for, for, for transform the HDR version to the SDR. And then the two outputs, one HDR and the other one is SDR. All right, so I'm going to configure my outputs like we did in the previous example by selecting ACCCT, AP1, and REC2020, 4000 nits, and PQ. All right, now in the SDR version, I'm going to select ACCCT, AP1, but instead of uh, REC2020 and 4000 nits, I'm going to select REC709. Now, the problem is that now we are just connecting the HDR output or the HDR transformation to the SDR transformation, which doesn't make any sense. And it will create a lot of uh, complex, uh, a lot of uh, mistakes in, 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 in the final result. So basically what we need to do is to bypass uh, the signal. So imagine that we have two monitors in this situation, right? There are some video boards uh, that support a stereo signal. And using the stereo signal, we can just uh, split the signal in left eye and right eye. And then we can just send one of those effects to the left signal, which is, let's say that the left signal is our HDR monitor. In fact, just to make it clear, I'm going to create here a node calling HDR. I need to move it in there. And another node Call it SDR. So we have HDR and SDR. So we have the left monitor is HDR, the right monitor is SDR. So how can we send this some of those effects or no those signals to the HDR version and how we can just send those to the SDR version? Well, it's pretty simple. If we go to here, we have bypass left and bypass right. Uh, for example, the SDR, the SDR grading, we don't want to see it in the HDR monitor, obviously. What we want to see it is in the only in the SDR. So basically, I'm going to bypass left. So in this way, it wants, uh, Mystic App won't send, won't send this signal to the HDR monitor. Now, with the HDR version, I don't want to see the, this transformation in the SDR monitor. So what I'm going to do is just to bypass right. So in that way, I'm just moving this signal to the HDR monitor. And with the SDR monitor, I'm going to do the same thing with my SDR grading, just bypass left, because again, this output is only for the SDR uh, monitor. So basically in that way, we have SDR grading for SDR monitor, HDR output for my SDR monitor, and my SDR output for my SDR monitor. Everything in one stack, and everything can be played at the same time, which is pretty cool. Now, Mystica doesn't have any kind of limitation in resolution or frame rate or anything uh, in this. Uh, there are other systems that are limited uh, when you work in that way. In Mystica, is the limitation is the hardware. If the hardware doesn't support uh, more than HD when you have uh, your signal split in two, then it's, it's what you will get. If your um, video board support uh, two signals in two streams in 4K, then you will get 4K. So it's pretty, pretty flexible because at the end it's only limited by the hardware and not by the software. Now, how can we just uh, propagate this to my rest of my timeline? Pretty simple, sorry. I'm just going to move everything here, extend it, and just macro split confirm. And there we go. Now we have my timeline fully prepared to work at the same time with SDR and HDR and grade both of them at the same time and uh, see all uh, both of them at the same time. If for any reason we don't want to see uh, one specific uh, version, we can always just mute a version and there we go. Uh, it's another way to, to do it. As you can see, Mystica saved the last, uh, the last step. If we reveal it again, we have all the bypass uh, there. So it's really, really simple. It's really flexible the way that we can just work with, uh, with our projects in HDR and SDR at the same time. As you can see, and this is like uh, going back to the beginning, um, because Mystica's timeline is agnostic, we have now like two workflows, two 
different ways to do the same thing at the end. In this particular case, we can see the, the two versions at the same time, but at the end, we're just working uh, in the same way. We have my HDR version as the master one and the SDR version as my secondary version of the same project. Now, there is another way to manage this kind of workflows between HDR and SDR by using uh, Dolby Vision. Uh, so let's take a look how to use Dolby Vision in Mystica. I'm going to duplicate my master version, which is the HDR version. And just as a reminder, we had as an output uh, Rec 2020, 4000 nits and PQ. And this setting is important because it's the one that we're going to have in our master display. I uh, have my grading in here, just remove it. All right. Uh, one important thing before working with Dolby, uh, with Dolby Vision, we need to be uh, care, uh, we need to be careful, and you see this rescale message in there. We need to transform and to adapt my project to the uh, my media to the project resolution. So what I'm gonna do first is just going to here, framing, and just clicking project and crop to fit, for example. I'm going to propagate those settings to the rest of the framings, and there we go. Now my all my shots are adapted to the project. Right, so I'm going to work with this particular shot for uh, for showing uh, Dolby Vision. Okay, so again, we're working in Rec 2020 and 4000 nits, right? Okay, and uh, of course, uh, PQ. So what we have to do first is to load my Dolby Vision effect on top of it. Uh, of course, you need a license provided by Dolby. Uh, the license is not... Uh, related with Mystica, so if you don't have a license uh, in your system, um, Dolby allows to load the Dolby Vision effect and to make the analysis, but you don't want, you won't be able to control the trims or your of your of your media. So at the end, you will need an. Uh, so at the end, you will need um, uh, a proper uh, license for that. All right. So what I'm gonna do is to go first to my setup. Dolby Manager, and in here we have several options. The first one is the aspect ratio. Uh, by default, it's taking the source. Uh, this is basically related with the letterbox of my clips. In this particular case, I don't have any letterboxes, but if I have letterbox, I need to put in here the aspect ratio of those uh, letterbox. Uh, this works in a global way, uh, but per shot, you have this shot parameter to select uh, in this uh, specific shot another aspect ratio. I'm going to leave it just in global. Now, if we go back again to the Dolby Manager, here I have the CMU version, uh, the, the, the kind of CMU. We have internal and external. I'm going to select the internal one, of course, because I don't have any external CMU connected to the system. Here is the version of Dolby Vision that we are using, which is the 2.9 version. And here it comes uh, the, the most important part of my of my settings, which is the master display that I'm using for for my grading, which again in this particular case was a 4000 nits 2020 MPQ, so we leave it in that way. But as you can see, we have a list of settings provided by Dolby, and we need to select one of those settings from, from this list. So again, this is the 4000 nits 2020 MPQ um, color space and, and color settings. And here we select the target display, which is, again is another list with some settings that we need to select the one that uh, that we want to use for converting our signals from 4000 nits 2020 MPQ to the one that we select in here. Again, in this particular case, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to select the 100 nits Rec 709. Click in Accept. And I'm going to use only one shot as an example. But if we go to here, go to zero and click in perform, this will change the image to this kind of greenish or yellowish image. This like an indicator of this shot is going to be analyzed. Now we press play, Mystica is analyzing the shot. Um, the speed of the analysis depends on the speed of the play. So basically, if, the, if your shot plays in real time, you will get a much faster um analysis you don't need to go shot by shot okay uh, okay so you can just propagate this setting and then play the whole timeline and mystica will analyze the the whole timeline but in this particular case i'm going just to focus on one shot and as you can see once the analysis is finished we have the minimum peak maximum and the average and if we bypass this you can see the color transformation 
that the Dolby Vision effect is doing over my image. Now, in here we have the trims. Uh, the trim basically controls the target transformation that we are doing and the way that we can change that uh, the result using the leave, gamma gain parameters, uh, the chroma weight and the saturation gain. We can have multiple trims if we have multiple deliveries. So for example, let's say that we have uh, another stream for uh, 600 nits and 2020 and PQ. Well, we can just enable another stream with those settings and now we have two trims. So in, when we export this media, we will export metadata for the, for the 100 nits version and the 600 nits version. Be careful because you cannot have duplicated trims in one uh, Dolby Efficient effect. If this is the case, Mystica will give you a warning message telling you that there is a problem and, and the problem is that you have um, you have duplicated trims in, in, in one uh, Dolby Vision FX. Uh, don't worry because if this happens, for example, I'm going just to select all of it and just export the metadata. Dolby export. You see that some instance uh, are duplicated trims, so basically is selecting you where you have your duplicate, your trims are duplicated. So this is the warning message that you get. So be careful, you cannot have duplicated trims for any of those trims, right? Now, what can you do with the trim? Because again, it's just um, manipulating the color image, the color aspects of the image to make it look as close as possible to your master uh, results. So basically you have the lead coming in here to control the color image, all right? So this is a, a way to control the final result of your SDR version in this case, because again, we are just transforming from uh, 4,000 nits 2020 MPQ to 100 nits and Rec 709. Now, once we have this, we need to export uh, the media. So we have two ways. You have seen one of them, which is basically by selecting the area or the shots or the project that we want to export, go to macros and do the export. And he, this will export only the metadata for these particular shots or for the selected shots. If you want to render the result and get the metadata, the both things uh, together, you need to select, well, the shot or the amount of shots that you want, uh, go to the output. And in here in the video part, you can just select uh, Dolby HDR and select, uh, well, by default is the Dolby Mezzanine, there is no other option, and just render this. And this is the uh, version for uh, for Dolby, which again, renders the image with the transformation and exports the metadata automatically. Okay, so as you can see, the workflow with Dolby Vision is really, really simple. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that Dolby Vision needs to be on top always. Uh, there is only one case where the Dolby Vision is below one effect in Mystica, which is when we use dissolves. If we were to go to here and apply a dissolve, the dissolve must be on top. What uh, Mystica is doing here is taking the metadata from this Dolby Vision effect and is interpolating this metadata with the next one. So basically, when you export this, you will have a result with the uh, metadata uh, interpolated between uh, both shots. But this is the only example where the where the Dolby Vision is below an effect on Mystica. The rest, for the rest of the effects, for the rest of the workflows, Dolby Vision must be on top of everything. All right. So uh, we have seen uh, how to manage an HDR and SDR workflow. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you guys is the use of, this, of, display, of display filters for managing some of these, uh, of these examples. So basically, for example, again, to duplicate in this HDR uh, master workflow, if we only have one version, or even if we have uh, several versions, but I think it works uh, much better with just one version, um, this output that we have in here is the same one in all the shots. So it doesn't make any sense to have it in, in the timeline, just in case, uh, it's, uh, except if you want to have it in here, like in this example where we are combining HDR with SDR, if it's just an output transformation uh, for my for my timeline, is um, there is a much more elegant way to do it, to work with it, which is using display filters. So basically, what we can do is just duplicate the effect that we want to use as a display filter, 
duplicate one media because uh, any display filter needs a media so duplicate it because it will remove the stack when we create it the the, um, the display filter then go to the display filter menus and in here I'm going to cre create a display filter by calling it ACES ODT I'm going to put underscore just in case ODT HDR okay so now as you can see the stack has be has disappeared uh, but now I can just go to my grading here and select display filter and we have several options here I'm going to select AC ODT HDR and uh, then I can apply this transformation to the GUI, to the live, to the scope, to the render, or you can just enable it and disable where you want to apply this display filter. The great thing of the display filters is that those effects are invisible. They are always applied on top of it. And for those effects that are the same effect for the whole project, is they are really, really useful because at the end, I mean, you don't need to change this effect at any moment. So at the end, you want to keep your timeline as clean as possible. So thanks to that, for example, we are just removing one effect in here. And we can do the same thing with the SDR version. For example, I'm having an ACS ODT for HDR and another one for HDR and just enable or disable them using the display filters.